Welcome to yet another episode of Brain Buzz, where we delve into the fascinating world of neurosciences and brain health. I'm your host, Dr. Kimon Bekelis, and uh, this is a segment that we um, are now starting in our podcast uh, that um, will have to do with uh, traveling outside of the confines of Long Island and uh, the Stroke and Brain Aneurysm Center, uh, where we're located and trying to go into different geographies, different states in the United States, and trying to look into and discuss the local um, stroke uh, environments and all the things that are done in those settings um, to, um, to address stroke. And we're doing that because the United States is a really vast country uh, with very different geographies, very different um, local uh, structures and local problems. Uh, and often uh, folks that serve stroke have uh, come up with innovative solutions to address those problems. And we're really excited to be able to do that and discuss uh, particular geographies and, um, and the problems that, that folks are facing locally and how they're dealing with them. And so today we're coming to you from uh, Southern Florida. And uh, we wanna discuss obviously stroke care in Florida. And uh, Florida is very uh, important when it comes to stroke care. Uh, there's a significant older population uh, in Florida and so obviously stroke is a disease that might happen in the elderly population and so obviously we want to see how the state and particularly southern Florida has adapted and has adjusted to addressing stroke and treating stroke. Obviously Florida is not short of resources. Uh, it's a state with over 20 million uh, people uh, population uh, and uh, uh, over 30 comprehensive stroke centers and uh, like we've discussed before a comprehensive stroke center is uh, a facility that's able to offer stroke services at the highest level both for ischemic and hemorrhagic stroke and that's very very important um, in terms of stroke care delivery regionalizing stroke care delivering those patients to a comprehensive stroke center is particularly important and vital to achieve uh, higher outcomes. And one of the first questions I had when I was um, thinking about Florida and how things are addressed here is what happens with um, diversionary policies. Across the country, there's a lot of discussion about whether folks need to be diverted from a comprehensive or rather from a primary stroke center to a comprehensive stroke center, meaning when an ambulance is transferring a stroke, should they bypass the nearest primary stroke center, which means that they would delay the administration of thrombolytic medications through the IV to go to a comprehensive stroke center in hopes that they can offer mechanical thrombectomy or endovascular treatments that then can open a blood vessel and provide blood flow into the brain. And so different states have different policies, even different counties within states have different policies. Uh, and you know, on Long Island, I know, for example, that um, in New York City, there's diversionary policies, or, or where, you know, where we are out in Suffolk County, there's no diversionary policies, although they've been discussed right now. In Florida, there's no mandate that folks need to be bypassing a, a primary stroke center to get to a comprehensive stroke center. Another issue, that's, uh, that, that is important when it comes to geography. Florida, of course, uh, is very diverse. Um, yeah, it has islands um, down south. We have the Florida Keys that are relatively isolated from the rest of the state. And, and that's where uh, resources like helicopter transportation uh, get, into, um, get into play. And uh, several facilities uh, in southern Florida uh, are offering helicopter transportation when it comes to stroke. That's a very important resource. We've done a lot of studies, uh, my group in particular, when it comes to helicopter transportation and its impact on better outcomes. And that is dramatic, especially in areas where um, that you know, geography is such that either transportation would be delayed because of, say, a lot of traffic, a lot of ground uh, traffic, or because you're isolated, say, in an islands, like um, you know, in the Florida Keys, whereas you need to get to a nearest comprehensive stroke center. Now, another important component when it comes to stroke care that uh, I wanted to look into when, when talking about Florida and Southern Florida in particular uh, was what is the utilization of uh, mobile stroke units. And uh, maybe this is a good segue to talk a little bit about mobile stroke units. So what a mobile stroke unit is, is uh, an ambulance that is um, equipped uh, to handle a stroke right on the field. So for example, somebody's having a stroke, the mobile stroke unit get dispatched, gets dispatched right at the site of the stroke. 
the patient is rolled in the back of the ambulance. The ambulance is equipped with a head CT. A head CT is acqu acquired right then and there, and now we're able to tell whether um, we're able to offer thrombolytic medications right on the spot. And why is that important? It is important because the faster you're able to deliver stroke care, the higher the chance to have a positive outcome, right? And one of the biggest challenges when it comes to mobile stroke units and these services is uh, the cost. Mobile stroke units are expensive. Uh, they can run um, in over a million dollars in equipment. And then obviously you have to take into account the operating costs. If you are in a city where hospitals are very much abundant, a mobile stroke unit might not be as useful as it would be in a setting where it would take a long time for a patient to get to the appropriate facility to receive thrombolytic medications, right? And so it's very important to decide where these should be deployed. Uh, when a mobile stroke unit uh, shows up at the, uh, at the scene of a stroke, there's a couple of important decisions that are being made. Being made. Like I said, one is, is there bleeding in the brain? If there's bleeding in the brain, you cannot administer thrombolytic medications, you cannot administer TPA or TNK, these clot-busting medications that open the blood vessel and allow the blood to flow back into the brain. However, now you can make an educated decision to transfer that patient to a comprehensive stroke center where they can receive care for the bleeding inside the brain. On the flip side, if you don't see any bleeding inside the brain, the patient has stroke-like symptoms, that's a good indication to go ahead and administer a thrombolytic medication. And typically that decision is made by a neurologist who's remotely connected to the mobile stroke unit, can examine the patient remotely through tele-neurology, telehealth, and make that decision and have the nurses, the medic, the EMTs that are staffing that unit uh, to be able to administer the thrombolytic medication. And then as the medication has been administered, the, the mobile stroke unit can now start driving to the nearest either primary stroke center. If this is not a large vessel occlusion, again you, again, you can get that information through advanced imaging studies that you can do right inside the mobile stroke unit or uh, transfer to a comprehensive stroke center if you identified a large blood clot that can benefit from endovascular care. And endovascular care, uh, like we've uh, discussed before uh, in, a, in our first episode of Brain Buzz, is going through the groin, navigating our catheters and wires all the way inside the brain, and then eventually uh, being able to uh, remove those blood clots mechanically. I said only one mobile stroke unit uh, is now in operation in Florida. Of course, we have to see the results and um, how good the outcomes will be of using this mobile stroke unit. But, but like I discussed before, it's very important to to have that resource available in the appropriate setting. Summarize about Florida, very diverse state, um, older population, uh, definitely challenges when it comes to uh, geography with a lot of remote areas, including islands, um, and also challenges when it comes to resource availability in the setting of, say, the hurricane season and extreme weather that can happen, of course, in Florida. However, Folks in Florida have, uh, seem to have figured out a way to address stroke uh, in an efficient way, and that is by very aggressive regionalized care with a lot of comprehensive stroke centers, almost 34 comprehensive stroke centers, bringing those resources, bringing those uh, advanced procedures available in every single community in Florida, and then supplementing the areas that do not have access to those communities with the use of either helicopter transportation or with the use of uh, mobile stroke units which are starting uh, to take off uh, in Florida. All in all, I would say um, a, a very progressive state um, when it comes to stroke care, uh, for sure. And, uh, you know, we, we will of course do another visit and uh, assess some of the local resources again. But uh, yeah, as a form uh, of introduction to this segment, uh, I'd say Florida is definitely one of the most progressive states and resource um, full state when it comes to stroke care. And uh, with that, I want to thank you. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody in another segment of uh, Brain Buzz. Thank you so much.